Welcome everyone to an epic game between Captain Morgan as Nurgle going up against Incarnation and Zinj. Now they're going to be playing on the Cornite Wastelands in a very traditionally Zinch favoured matchup. However, as we're going further and further here into Warhammer 3, I've certainly seen this game mode getting closer and closer between both of these factions. Now for the Lord Choice, we are going to have the Exalted Lord of Zinch here with the Greater Arcane Conduit. Here also with the Spell Mastery giving some really nice spell bonuses. Now we are going to have the Infernal Gateway which is extremely expensive but one of the most gorgeous spells in the game. It's a real marvel to look at. We're also going to be having the Pink Fire of Zinch and then also the Portal Glyph to really bolster that air superiority. Three units of the Chaos Furies in the sky here with that magic damage and then also coming in with the shields making them rather handy with these flyers. In the front mass range five units of the Blue Horrors really stretch along the front line. They're going to be protected by three units of the tanky Forsaken of Zinch. Now they have had their spell resistance stripped however they're still very very powerful. Now they will lose up against the Forsaken of Nurgle but they'll still do pretty well overall. In the backside five more units of the Pink Horrors coming for 10 units of mass range here across the battlefield uh, making it a little bit powerful here up against Nurgle. Nurgle not known for their armor but and there's a couple of little tips and tricks here coming from Captain Morgan today. So three units of the Nurglings in the front. This is kind of the only thing that I disagree with in the army composition. Not a fan of the Nurglings. They don't have any armor and it's mass range here that's pretty cheap from Zinch. I'd say these are probably not your best option. That's probably 1.2k that could have been redistributed across the battlefield. Three units of the Forsaken of Nurgle in the front. Very, very powerful. Maybe even coming with more of these would have been very good. They're very dominant on the battlefield. Good armor. Really hard to shut down from pink and blue horrors. So Hibbity Hobbity, the Plague Toads are coming to claim their property. Four units on the right-hand side, and you know these bad boys are my favorite. But they're going to be getting in and doing some good stuff. Four units of the Pox Riders on the left-hand side as well. These boys are going to be hopping into battle, and they're seriously powerful. 50 armor as well, making them you know, some of the more tanky units in the Nurgle roster. And, uh, of course, if you do come with that uh, Cloud of Flies ability, giving them up to 47 melee defense is rather powerful. Poison, magic damage, anti-infantry, 64 weapon strength is uh, very, very powerful indeed. Good mobility at 59 speed. They're going to be a bit of a nuisance here across the battlefield for sure. So for the Lord Choice, we are going to have the Herald of Nurgle on a rock fly with the Nurgle Magic, Arcane Conduit, as well as the Children of Nurgle with Stream of Corruption and then also the Locus of Fecundity for those healing abilities. So nice and cheap here for the Lord Choice. It does look like the Exalted Lord of Change, the Siege Caster coming over to meet the Nurgle Caster. Maybe a bit of hand-to-hand -hand combat going on here. So it looks like we're going to be floating down to fight up against the Forsaken of Zinch. A bit of an interesting one there coming from the Exalted Lord. Maybe just wants to do a little bit of chip damage where he can. But now it looks like the Rockfly Caster is going to be charging over to fight hand-to-hand -hand combat. And with the Cloud of Flies giving him 61 melee defense, which is absolutely absurd. But 50 on 50 here for the Exalted Lord, he can also fight in melee combat. Flying across is going to be the Triple Fumi, so we do also have the Gateway Summon in the back pocket, so we can get some more units in the sky to fight here up against the Herald of Nurgle. But here we go, Hibbity Hobbity across the left-hand side here with the Pox Riders. They're going to be coming to compromise the Blue Horrors, but Pink and Blue is going to be firing to the front. They can do some good damage here, so we can see damage coming on the Pox Riders quite a bit indeed. That's going to be getting near to 25% damage already, so you can see why this mass range does so well up against Nurgle. Down at the front, we are going to get a stream of corruption that's going to entirely strip the magical shield here of the Forsaken as they fight up against the Nurglings. But it looks like we have Forsaken of Nurgle charging across. Unfortunately, the Lord Choice is going to be trapped in and amongst most of the Chaos Furies and the Lord Choice, not particularly having a great day of it. Maybe a Fecundity could be activated here for a bit of healing, and it looks like we are going to get a Chaos Summon. So the Chaos Fury Summon, you can tell, is going to kind of be a little bit more of an orange color. And you can see they don't actually have the Zinch brackets, so you can tell that that is the summon there. In the sky, the Lord Choice is going to move away. Doesn't really want to fight up against the Rock Fly. Not too good there for him. But in the back here, we do have the Plague Toads. Tojitsu fighting with all of their might and prowess as they've learned through all the martial arts with these backflips, the kicks, and all these amazing martial kind of prowess melee attacks throughout the Forsaken. They'll do some very, very good work indeed. In the back, more Plague Toads going to be fighting alongside their Nurgling brothers as they spread Plastilance throughout the entire Zinch roster. In the backside, Plato is trying to compromise the Pink Horrors, charging in for the heroic 
kind of elements they are. The Chaos Fury is going to be compromising the Plankton to the best of their ability as to try and prevent them from getting in and amongst the ranks of the Pink Horrors. Now they're going to be firing as a mass front line. Looks like the Herald of Nurgle using fecundity here, trying to heal what he can as he tries to compromise as many as the Blue Horrors. They'll do loads and loads of damage if at all possible. Forsaken here beating back the Forsaken of Zinch. The Nurgle boys certainly do very well. That poison is incredibly powerful. Those debuffs to armor piercing and then base weapon damage really does make the difference. You can see they're also losing their ability here with Frenzy, bringing them down to only 49 weapons strength compared to the 63 with also the additional Frenzy here for the Forsaken of Nurgle. So Pox Riders in the back, they're going to be fighting quite nicely. Uh, they're going to be just really shredding through the Blue Horrors. It doesn't look like here the Exalted Lord is going to be battering back the Forsaken. Uh, more Pox Riders here just really shredding through the Pink Horrors quite nicely, but they're going to be down to half health. They've been shot a considerable amount here in the pocket. Looks like it's going to be a bit of a sandwich of Pox Riders here up against the Pink Horrors. Lord Choice is trying to get away. The mass of the Plague Toads really trying to hold him in. Uh, but looks like he is going to get away there. Forsaken going to be charging downhill, trying to see if we can finish off the majority of this mass range. So it looks like most of the pocket here is going to be getting free. Pink and blue horrors going to be just amongst the battlefield, trying to see if they can shoot down most of the lightly armoured forces of Nurgle. In the back, one unit of the Forsaken, which would have been really key in the battle, is going to be arriving extremely late here. So, so we are going to get a stream of corruption down the line here of the Forsaken. As the cone is going to be a little bit more focused at the beginning there, that's where you're going to find more of the damage compared to the spread element of that tear-shaped spell. And look at this. The Infernal Gateway coming on the Playtoads. It's not going to do much damage up against the monstrous cavalry, but still, look at the gorgeous ability of this spell. What an absolute amazing spell to witness here on the battlefield one of the most beautiful in warhammer 3 and something i definitely want to show more of it's such a gorgeous spell it's not really that cost efficient it's very expensive but either way it's uh, very very nice to witness indeed so the triple factor effect of zinch coming down here is going to be the bombardment spell of pink and blue flames which are going to just be dawning here on the Pox Riders and the Plotoads, and they're going to delete them in the middle. I do not believe they have any effect, really, on the Zinch units, but I'm not too sure about that. So the Pink Flame coming down the line here, which is actually going to give Warp Flame, which is quite a nice ability, negative 10 armor there, and then also a Fire Weakness, which, of course, we do have Fleming and Magical Attacks here for the Pink and Blue Horror. So very good up against the Forsaken. Really allows them to fight just that little bit more efficiently. In the middle, we do have Pox Riders fighting in the back up against the Pink Horrors and Blue Horrors on both sides. They're going to be getting compromised here. Now the Lord Choice, the big burly chicken coming in for a bit of a scrap here. And uh, I love his staff. Absolutely fantastic there with the Zinch emblem on the top. I want to see a couple of bonks with that big bad boy. But it's like here, he's just going to be flapping, using those claws, getting in, doing all the good damage that he does. But for the majority, it looks like Zinch is going to be winning the, uh, sorry, losing the left flank to Nurgle. Now we do see the Forsaken kind of breaking down here up against the Pink Horrors. And more of the Forsaken going to be charging in and amongst most of the uh, units. So we are going to get another Infernal Gateway in the backside. That's actually going to compromise a lot of the Forsaken of Zinch rather than the Nurgle units. We're also going to get the second tier faction ability here for Zinch, which is going to be that single bombardment that also applies armor sundering. So if we do shoot now up against the Herald, he's only going to be having zero armor, which is, uh, yeah, a little bit uh, unfortunate here. Down to 2,011 HP. He can fight quite nicely up against the Exalted Lord of Change, but you can see he balances the power massively in the Zinch favor. Almost 90% the reason due to the Exalted Lord. He's going to be incredibly healthy. 7,250 HP plus that shield, which is going to be uh, you know, very, very powerful indeed. So we are going to get the Warp Flame down the side of the Forsaken of Nurgle. And so the Blue Horrors here are going to be biting the dust and going back to the realms of Zinch. Some Pink Horrors here left. It looks like the Pox Rider is going to be fighting to the best of their ability here up against the Exalted Lord Choice. But it's like the Pink Horrors are going to be holding on, but they are suffering in the middle. Perhaps, an, uh, maybe there was an overcast here. I'm not sure what the damage on the Herald of Nurgle there was, but um, yeah, a little bit of damage there going up against him. We do see the Pox Riders really suffering. We do see Forsaken charging into the battlefield. The Lord Choice gets away, kind of sacrificing his Pink Horrors, which means when they fall, it's just going to be the Lord Choice versus the world. Maybe trying to see if he can regain some of that shield that he lost. He's going to be down by half here. But the Pink Horrors, yeah, they're going to be getting kind of compromised here by the Forsaken. Pox Riders and the Lord Choice are going to do some good work. Looks like the Warp Flame going down the line, so more magic coming forward here. 
from Zinch in the course of the more magic they cast, the more abilities they get from their, uh, their faction effect. Same here for Nurgle, and the more damage they take, the more they're going to be getting in the back pocket as well. But it looks like here, no, there's going to be army losses! GG's, and well played here to Incarnation and Zinch. Brilliant stuff. I mean, I'm not entirely sure that game was over yet, but it seems to be that uh, Balance of Power decided that it was. But uh, maybe the Lord Choice could have got back in there. I'm not too sure. Maybe a Locus of Fecundity could have been in the back pocket. And maybe there was a faction effect that maybe could have been used there to save the game. But I'm, I'm not too sure. But either way, it looks like the game had enough here of this matchup. But still, Captain Morgan giving a very, very good example of how this matchup is becoming closer and closer. I still think in Domination, it is very Zinch favoured. But in land battles, it's certainly getting closer and closer. So 1,400 here for the Herald of Nurgle, very, very good stuff. 600, 480, 320, and 860 there for the Pox Riders. So very, very powerful stuff indeed. A couple of them coming in a little bit late, some hitting, and then, you know, maybe 10, 20 seconds later we had the rest. If we get them all hitting and compromising as quickly as possible, we can really mitigate as much damage as possible. Now we do see the Forsaken, 420, 930, and 540. Some coming in very, very late, probably this unit here in the backside for 420. But uh, 210, 350 with 111 and 340 there for the Plague Toads. The Plague Toads doing very, very well. Um, the biggest problem probably the Nurgling. So we got uh, 56, 59 and 72. So to win a game with these two that had very good, probably equal levels in ability here in the multiplayer scene, I think 1.2k was a bit of a waste there on the Nurglings. I think bringing in some extra units. So maybe actually coming in with an extra unit of Forsaken. And then if you have some extra money to save somewhere, you probably could have brought in also a uh, a Nurgle hero, maybe you know, maybe the um, the cultist who could have brought in a summon that uh, you know, maybe could have been quite handy there in the back, and also maybe bringing him on horseback. Um, you could have also had him being a little bit more mobile. He would have had regen. He would have been quite difficult to take down, and also would have provided armor sundering across the battlefield, which would have been quite nice here up against the Forsaken. But it would have helped you shred through those a lot quicker. So maybe just some thoughts there, or maybe you know, just more Forsaken. Maybe coming in with an extra Pox Rider if the rules allow it. Um, perhaps there could have been some other elements on the battlefield that you could have put 1.2k into. Now for the Exalted Lord of Change, 2,240. No surprise there. Very, very powerful abilities, spells, the Infernal Gateway doing some lovely work. And it's such a beautiful spell. I wish we did see it more here in the multiplayer scene. But 570, 710, and 660 there for the Forsaken of Zinch. With 170, 540, 320, 160, and 480 there for the Blue Horrors. So 150, 370, 230, 300, and 417 there for the Pink Horrors, with 130, 460, and 311 for the Furies. So what an awesome game. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. If you did, please smash that like button. Feel free to leave a comment down below as well of what your thoughts of the matchup are, and maybe some ways you could improve it. But of course, always do be um, kind with your thoughts and comments. If you haven't already, do feel free to subscribe. It really does help the growth of the channel. I'm very close to 1,500. So if we get there, I'll definitely be doing a special stream to kind of uh, celebrate that. So if you haven't already, do feel free to check out that description for my Discord and then also my Twitch. And then other than that, I've been your Boy Logic. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all very, very soon.